ladies and gentlemen, your hook it up man worldwide, Paul Pono. Hey, how y'all doing? Going out of here, very good, huh? Well, nice to see you all. It looks like we got a full crowd, and this is going worldwide. <laughs> so watch out, world. We're gonna let you know how to be real. My name is the Hook It Up Man because I hook up everybody almost all the time, no, all the time. But anyway, my initials. The best way to remember me as a comedian is H P P or just P P. Paul Pons. PP is like, PP, yeah, you know me and you will see me. So every time you go tinkle or pee or whatever you want to call it, you're going to say, who's that guy we saw? That, that funny looking guy. The guy with the funny hat, funny shaped head. You know, uh, what was his name? And what's going to come to mind is PP. What? what? Why we call him Pee Pee? I have no idea. But his name was Pee Pee, Lucy. Oh, okay. Hey, this Pee Pee. Okay. So that's what's going to come to mind, I'm sure. So don't worry about it. You will remember me. So don't even take a breath or worry about situations. Let's just relax and take a deep breath. You know, did you hate that when the doctor told you to do that? You always wondered why, you know. And like yoga, yoga is supposed to be relaxing, right? They say, yoga, take some yoga, you'll relax and you'll be very congenial. And the apparatus will relax, right? Well, that's what they say. Too. So, all of a sudden, you're taking a yoga class, right? And doing yoga, they say, breathe in deep. And let out. All that does for me is give me gas, to be honest. It relaxes me so much that all of a sudden I feel like I have gas. Okay? So, and yoga is for limber people. They say it's not. But how many people still, at a certain age in their life, could do that cross, that Indian thing? Ugh, that's, that's me. That's all I could do right there. And for me to have to do that, and take a deep breath and relax. That is not relaxing. I don't know why they say yoga is relaxing. To me, yoga should be renamed. It should be, you know, take yoga bil te. What does that mean? That means when you are relaxing, you have a beer and a te, and you're watching a program. To me, that's more relaxing because then you're eased, you feel good, you know, you're relaxed, your, your lips are dry. I mean, to me, that is my kind of yoga. Ladies and gentlemen, let's wake up. Yoga is not relaxing for most people. I don't mean a knock your profession, but to me, it's just obvious. Have you seen people? You know, from like 40 on up, trying to do yoga. I mean, you're either laughing or you're saying, what are you doing? I mean, it's time to change that, you know? I mean, this is relaxing right here, you know? I mean, this is my kind of yoga. I mean, right now, I'm doing yoga. See, and that's about the best I'll ever do. And that is all I can do, okay? And some societies stereotype from different on it, so that's what you got, you know? But anyway, I want to talk a little bit about um, Chicano food. There's a lot of Chicanos, you know, that I know. A lot of cool friends and stuff like that. And one Chicano that I know, he's the coolest dude. His name's Alberto. And he actually feels, because I was in movies with Adam Sandler, John Travolta, Chris Rock, uh, Martin Lawrence, and William Nicey, and all these other ones, that I am rich. <laughs> and I have a barbershop. I've been doing hair and stand-up for 20 years in the barbershop. <laughs> so, I have a little experience. Um, so he says, Hey bro, yo, this shit, you know what? I think you should give me a free haircut, bro. You're with those movie stars. And you're rich. You are rich, bro. Can I have a free haircut? 
And you know what I say? I told them in the same language. Hey bro, you know what? All my haircuts are free in my barbershop for everybody. Yeah. Really bro? You see more you do, I said. And I said, thank you, I said. And I go, but there's one condition, I said. The bullshit is 8.50. He was like, what I did? But the haircut's free. Yeah. Right on. I knew you were cool, bro. I knew you were rich. I knew you were cool, I said. I love that, bro. I love that stuff, you know. I love that. That is so beautiful, bro. You know, that's the best thing ever, man. You know. And I love that so much because I'm going to come here and tell all my friends. I think he's calling me right now. Yeah. What is it? Huh? Oh, I'm busy. No. Why not? See what I mean? They even call you when you're on stage. They call you no matter what. It's just one of those things, you know. And they say, I am a Latino. What's the difference between a Chicano and a Mexicano. What is the difference? Do you know what the difference is? Vocabulary, emotion. Uh, Mexicano, what he does, and he talks, he says, andale pues. Well, andale way. <laughs> but pussy, well pussy. Did you say pussy? You said pussy? Oh, yeah. And then when I speak English, it sounds a little funny sometimes, you know. Well, yeah. It was a... So Spanish sounds much, you know. And then you've got the Chicano. And the Chicano says, What are they, bro? That's it. Simon. Yo, bro. Carnal. A la Modi. A la Verga. A la. Are we related to Allah? Hmm. So there's a difference though in vocabulary. So let's remember that. Okay? See, there's a Mexicano. I could tell he has a Chihuahua shirt. <laughs> and there's a Chicano. I could tell he has Los Lobos. Orale. But anyway, we got to realize and wake up to different things. And my Chicano friend tells me, you know how we do the Magdalena? This is the way you do the Magdalena. Check it out. <laughs> and I go, thank you for teaching me the Magdalena in Chicano style. And he goes, hey bro, you know what? You did it wrong. What? This is the way it goes, bro. But stick it out. <laughs> wow, you know what? You got a lot of experience, bro. <laughs> so much experience. It's kind of scary. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. You know what I mean. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. But anyway, what I am trying to imply and trying to justify is a difference. A little difference. A small difference, you know. And Alberto is not here today, but he's like a mentor. He's kind of like a guy that is actually a guy that's on my shoulder. He talks to me in different ways. If he ain't calling me, he's talking to me in different circumstances. Circumstances to a point of honor and beyond. Almost unbelievable. It's very amazing. He tells me in his life, the root of all evil is sushi and Pussy. And I was all, well, justify that. Justify what you said. And he said, 
Well, this is the way it goes. Check it out, DC. We you got uh, you got some sushi, very expensive, and it costs money to eat, right? And then you got some pussy, very expensive, and very expensive to eat, right? Well, I never thought about it that way. Uh, and he says, check it out. He goes, Dick Cheney. The guy Dick Cheney's had five heart attacks. Five heart attacks. You know, you spend nine months trying to get out in the rest of your life trying to get back in. And Dick Cheney is having a hell of a time. He's had five heart attacks. He had a pacemaker. And now, all of a sudden, he got a heart transplant. I don't know if he was first in line, second in line, when he had money, you know. But he has a heart transplant. And check this out. All the Democrats were holding their breath when he was having that heart transplant. Why? Because they were hoping that it was a Republican heart. But right after the transplant, this is what happened. He came out. The media's there. Fox News is there. Supposedly. That's what Alberto said. And he said that Obama is the worst president we've ever had. So all the Democrats went, oh, shit. It's a Republican heart. Son of a bitch. Man. You can't win to lose. So that's how we know, you know. And Dick Cheney can't feed in a uterus no more. You're too big. Just because your name's Dick doesn't mean you got to actually think that. You know what I'm saying? And so the uterus dilates to 10, 10 centimeters for a baby to come out. And you think you could get back in when you were bigger than half? Oh, so anyway, there are things in society that are so amazing, you know. There's a lot of things going on, you know. Very, very congenial apparatus things, you know. Things I like it in my day, you know, back, well, you know, like Alberto says that about sushi and pussy and all that. But in a way, he has a point. It could bring you down. It could literally fuck you. <laughs> or you may be able to fuck it back. It all depends on the situation. Okay? Now, the situation, check it out. Mr. Tiger Woods, known all over the world, he went from a hundred million dollar man a year to a one million dollar man. Why? He thought he could play 18 holes. He found out he could only play 11. That's right. You like that one, don't you? And see, Mr. Bill Clinton was almost impeached. Or he was impeached, and he got impeached, and he got a Furberger at the same time. We don't know. We don't recall. And his famous lines were, what was his famous lines? Okay, his famous lines were, actually, this is his famous line. It was, I do not play that harmonica. I play that saxophone. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, you got to know when to walk away. You got to know when to run. You never count your money. While you're sitting at the table, they'll be time enough for counting when the deal is done. They say, hey, when the whoop is done. Thank you, my fellow Americans. I love you so. Oh, yes, I do. Yeah, that's what happened. So, it's time to wake the fuck up, everybody.